you told us. Well, we got 80 people. We got 80 people on our lobby. Nice. No, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's wrong. Dibs on all the chest up here. <laughs> I mean, dibs on the only chest up here. One chest. Please give me a bull action. No, they're mine. Remember, Eddie, remember what you did to us? Uh, how did how did that fall kill me? I was literally like t 12 feet from the ground and I died. And when she sits down with Dean, it really pisses off her ex Jesse. He's still in nearby in the diner with the uh, He storms out off book, leaving his buddy Quentin behind to chat it up with Nancy. I know a bunch of you are fans of Kyle Galvin who plays Quentin, so there, I, I said his name. Dean whines about having bad dreams today, so he gets bored with this conversation and goes to call her agent about getting cast in a different horror movie. While she's gone, Dean falls asleep, allowing Evil Dream Man to show up with a real weird visual effect, and I hate a bunch. No, no, no. I am now. The next part is awesome, though. Chris comes back to find Dean holding a knife to his own throat, and then apparently dragging it across his own neck. Not just a simple split, but deeply tearing into that neck. Holy shit, this is a real cool opening kill that I wish the rest of the movie had measured up to. At Dean's funeral, Chris nods off, because I guess he's just boring as hell if he wasn't much. And she briefly has a dream about a little girl with a slashed up chest that ends with her ankle getting grabbed by a zombie. She wakes up from her disrespectful nap and finds a picture on display of Dean as a little boy playing with that same little girl. Oh uh, no, let me watch you now. But she didn't meet Dean until high school. She also tells him about how Dean was doing his you know, real before he died, but Jesse just blames his behavior on Phil. Even after Nancy comes out of nowhere to tell Chris he believes her that something weird is going on. That night of the wait, is Stephanie Elm Street house? You're not even gonna be Why man? Um you um Um you guard me. I know I used to be a non believer, but that house is the most resilient fan favorite character of the entire goddamn Elm Street saga. And you give us this? This is sacrilege. Sacrilege! In her bag, in her bag, Nancy is listening to some music when she falls asleep so we can get a CG version of that famous effect shot from the original. Now, contrary to what a lot of you think, I don't just hate all CGI indiscriminately, but can any of you look at this and honestly say it looks better or cooler than the practical effect done in the original when VFX artist Jim Doyle pressed his face through a sheet of spandex stretched across a hole in the wall? No, you can't. Chris goes looking for old pictures of herself from when she was a kid, but a lot of them appear to be missing, and her mom is weirdly deflective about it. So that night, she goes into her attic and finds a box of her stuff from childhood that includes the flash of blouse she saw in her dream. A jump scare knocks her down. Green dude asks if she remembers it, but then she wakes up screaming in bed. I don't know, man. Looks like she doesn't remember you. Just tried to stand out a little more. Maybe get like a hat or something. Maybe a loud sweater. Good thing he'll have another chance to remind her who she is when she falls asleep in class the next day and her fears turn to ash around her. That star fan Joe guy is at the blackboard and he tells Chris that she looks just as beautiful as ever. When he goes to give her a little hair trim with a finger plate, she wakes up screaming in class. And sure enough, she's got a good luck lock laying in her school book. Chris goes to her home on Elm Street where her mom takes off for an impromptu business trip to London. But Chris doesn't have to spend the night alone. Jesse is outside her window, concerned about her weirdness as of late, and when she tells him about her unwanted dream death, he catches on quick. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Eddie, there, Eddie, next time I get impulses, I'm launching you off from what you did to all of us. You made me kill myself this time. You knew what I was trying to do, but you resisted it and made me kill myself. That's what you invoke when you remake a classic like this. I'll spare you all the shot of the dead dog she finds back there, but not the Freddy joke that follows. I was just Patty, too. <laughs> 
Like I said, he still cracks some jokes, but he's way less silly about it than the Freddy of all those dream whatever scenes. When Chris runs inside, she ends up in a free scene, where young her leaves her past some girls practicing for the school talent show. She sees Freddy, too, counting down to play hot. Right when he's going to come, whether she's ready or not, she wakes up safely in bed. Or maybe not all that safely. you. You know the words to this song, folks. Chris is lifted out of bed and flies through the air like she's fighting in an early 2000s kung fu movie. And Jesse watches her in disbelief. She eventually rises up above the bed and gets her chest flashed open into four gases by an unseen force. I guess this redo of the kill that started it all was fine. I'm just not really sure what the point of it is. Jesse runs out through the front door, which triggers the home security system. Oh, it's a Chris Fancy, huh? He somehow materializes in Nancy's room without a noise and begs her to listen to him about what happened. But she's too busy singing her favorite song to pay him any mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Freddy, good. I can quit calling him the scary motor green man or whatever the fuck. Now that the movie has established his name, I didn't want to spoil it for all the people who had no idea. Jesse tells her not to call him, please, because if she dies in her dream, she'll die. No, I got online like an hour and 30 minutes ago. Looks like they can use a little work there, bud. I didn't do anything! Stop! Stop! <laughs> I love that little shut up. Stop! Nancy calls her money and asks her to meet up with him to talk, so he does some research on everyone's favorite search engine. Get the blast. The only engine that requires you to both hit enter and click blast off to get your search results against that famous Robin Egg Blue background. He falls asleep at his computer, and I do like the way the setting becomes a dreamscape, from the vibrating bookshelves to the endless aisles that seemingly replicate and distort with the wide angle. Heads up for a jump there, though, because this is how his dream ends. He wakes up with Nancy there, and she drops the F-bomb on him. In jail, Jesse's pulled out of his cell because his bail's been posted, but it turns out this is just a nightmare, and now he's in the boiler room, along with a bunch of kid versions of the characters in this movie. Freddy shows up to provide a spark of life for the sequence, and after Jesse runs into the body of Chris and Dean, we get a variation on the Vince and God line. Freddy toys with Jesse for a minute before he seemingly disappears from the place, but then he returns and kills him with a finger knife fist through the back. Damn, that was such a clean. We see the result in real life, too. Jesse falls over dead in his jail cell, his fellow prisoner looking on. In a good moment of dark humor, the other guy starts screaming about how he didn't do it. Good luck with that trial, dude. While doing the sleep stuff, Nancy gets real tired, so Clinton offers her donor wrong, an amphetamine he takes for ADD. So, you know what? I guess this movie really did update the franchise for the modern era. Mission accomplished. Jesse learns some stuff about micro-caps, little waking dream states, that can occur after 70 hours of being awake, so sounds like we'll be seeing some of that in the future. At home, Nancy asks her mom, played by Connie Britton, if she ever hung out with all those other kids when she was little, or if she ever knew a guy named Freddy. I don't think so. Yeah, something about that face makes me not believe her. But here, let's do another scene from the original. That'll be fun stuff. Nancy gets in her bathtub for a little sudsy nap, and wouldn't you know it, her bathtub seems to have an infestation of finger knives, a noted invasive species in the Elm Street ecosystem. The scene stops short of a full-on imitation, because Nancy doesn't get pulled underwater. Instead, she wanders into her bedroom full of snow, and it becomes the exterior of a place called Badham Preschool. Freddy shows up and implores Nancy to remember him, because she was his number one. Ah, a face flick? Freddy, you nasty. She wakes up in her tub to a call from Quentin, who tells her that Jesse has been killed. They look up at him, but find that it was closed years ago, then ransack her frickin' house until they stumble upon a hidden folder that contains a class picture from Badham Preschool. And it looks like the gang's all here. Nancy's mom comes in, and after she and Nancy yell at each other for a moment, she sets off a flashback that starts with a cool transition into the photograph. It takes us back to a time when Fred Krueger was but a humble preschool gardener who lived in the basement of the school. Wait, what? Aren't there, like, zoning laws or some shit? Fred really loved the kids and played games with them, like Hide and Go Seek and, uh, Scratchy Backy, I guess? I never really liked Scratchy Backy. I was more of a free tag guy. Young Nancy told her mom about a secret cave that Freddy would take them to, but in the present, when Clinton asks why they didn't go to the police, Connie Britton tells them that Fred left town before they could, but that he's gone now and it's all okay. She blames the dreams on repressed memories and says to let the whole thing go. But Nancy doesn't buy it and thinks there's going to be more here than meets the eye. She does some Robin Blue Blast off there just to find the other guys picture and learns that each one of them has been killed in extenuating circumstances. But no, my kill count doesn't include deaths that took place in the past and we only learned about through the news. Oh, also, one of the guys who looked up made a blogging website where he chronicled his nightmare experiences with Freddy. But the last video he watches ends with him smashing his face into the camera and just, like, he would have had to upload that video after the fact. Quentin's at split practice when he apparently falls asleep mid-stroke, sinking down to the bottom of the pool and resurfacing in a nasty little puddle pool outside in an industrial-looking area. This is a flashback dream scene. 
thing that's going to fill us in on Freddy's backstory more, since nobody watching this movie is familiar with it. Fred was chased into an abandoned building by the Elm Street parents, led by Quentin's dad, played by Clancy Brown, who I will always love, because he's both Elvin Inman and Mr. Kraft. Hey! And now he's looking to light this bitch ablaze, as he throws a Molotov cocktail into the building that sets it on fire and immolates Freddy Krueger. This is, of course, the fire that kills Freddy Krueger in its human form. So I'm going to include him on the count, so he manages to shoot force his way out the building and run at Quentin. That's probably just an embellishment. Quentin, Quentin wakes up poolside and finds Nancy to tell her all the stuff he's learned about Fred. They confront Clancy Brown about it, and he admits that they never found Fred's purported case. So the movie takes kind of an interesting twist when Quentin proposes that he wasn't actually guilty of the things they said he did when they were young. How do you know he was guilty? You killed an innocent man. Quentin blames himself and the other kids for this apparent wrongdoing, but before they can go off on some vindication, what? Adventure, Nancy looks down the hall to see another iconic image from the original. Yeah, I know. Because I don't know, man. I still don't fully understand remaking a movie and reusing all its awesome shots. They were perfect already. Why shoot the same thing again? And yes, I know I'm saying that after I just reshot and re-released the Freddy vs. Jason kill count last week. The original was age-restricted. Quentin blames the hallucination on microsleep, so they go to a pharmacy where he can re-up on his amphetamines. But the doctor tells him he's all out of refills, and he's not about to help this tweaker out. Nancy falls into some more microsleep dreams that include Freddy tossing her out of the Jeep and her seeing the store transform into a boiler room. As Fred continues to stalk her down the aisle, she tears off part of his sweater. So after she wakes up from a real bad finger knife slash, Nancy and Quentin learn that sacred Elm Street fact. You can pull stuff out of the dream world into reality. Nancy is taken to the hospital by Quentin, who manages to snag an EpiPen from a nurse cart while no one is looking. The doctor tries to sedate Nancy, but she ain't having it. And after the doc and Connie Britton leave the room for a quick little sidebar, they come back to find Nancy's flown the coop. She and Quentin are off to find the preschool. And during the drive, they have some real bad dialogue about how unique and special they are. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, I don't exactly fit in. Oh, Rooney Mara, you're so misunderstood. What? Oh, I thought I already read it. I pressed triangle. Well, we got it now. We're left, boys. There's another jump scare as Quentin looks in and out of micro. I actually like the microscope edition to the movie, because that's the real thing. <laughs> it's like a bright bomber, dude. It's like the best. It's, it's like the outfit that always comes out. Man. Behind a maintenance door and down some stairs is a bunch of evidence that this used to be Freddy's. It, it's not even try hard anymore, because so many people have it. Creepy art gallery Nancy finds nearby. Behind those pictures is a little secret sliding door that leads into a small little room. Looks like they found Freddy's infamous cave. Wait, was that dick butt? Yo, that drawing's almost dick butt. Annoying trailing effects flashbacks show Nancy remembering her cave time hangouts with human Fred. Then Quentin finds a box of pictures that confirms the darkest and most disgusting part of Freddy's backstory. This is the moment that Kruger became a confirmed pedophile. I know that the molestation thing was part of Craven's original idea for the character, but it didn't become on-screen canon until just now. And it's just, I don't know, man, it's a lot to deal with. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> Nancy decides that time to confront Kruger head on. Hold up. Lies down in a dirty, nasty bed down there. And Quentin owns himself to take the place. And Nancy got to let him breathe. Four choices were. She tells him to talk to him. Trap. 
school, and much less embarrassing than that blow up call from the end of the first one. Movie ends with Freddy pulling out his mom into the mirror while she screams with hair. As you can tell, I didn't think very highly of this movie. But maybe it managed to outshine its predecessor and kill. Let's find out and get to the number. Still good. Five people died in the night of the day, but yeah, one more than the original. Of the victims, three were male, two were female, and two were split the gas flow of that number, and with the run time of 95 minutes, the second time to a kill on average. Up to the golden gate, off of the coolest hill, the two is close with those into a tight end. This one is so cheap and brutal that it really stuck with me, unlike everything else. It's all excited for Lane's kill, and I'm ready, I guess. He just kind of burned to death, and we've already seen this like three times already. And that's it. The Nightmare on Elm Street remake came out in 2010, and although it did okay at the box office, so roundly panned by critics and audiences alike that it remains the last time you've seen Freddy Krueger on the big screen. And please, don't tell me there's a new one coming out this year, because Return to Elm Street is just a studio fan-made trailer for a movie that doesn't exist. They look awesome, and they're great, but it's not a new Elm Street movie coming out, so I can't cover it. In fact, we're done with Freddy Krueger here on the show now, but if you like creepy skin killers who make jokes with murder, I got something in store for you next week when we start the Leprechaun franchise. Until then, I'm James H.D. A teammate's going up on the roof. I'm following. Following. Never mind, he just jumped off. He jumped off. Wait, yes, I found a bolt action. Let's go, boy. I got you, I got you, man. I got you, man. Oh, man, my good. I got bandages. Did you die? He put a spike trap in. I'm dead. Fine. And you know what? It's not that dreadful. It's kind of grown up. It's time to meet our protagonist, who happens to live in the best goddamn house ever built. You know I need that Joe Dutch Colonial, the Elm Street house. Our final girl is Lori. That's right, Lori, not Laura. And her buddies are Kia and Gib. They're all boring and superficial. Do you guys think I should get a nose job? It's one of the worst parts about this movie. These characters just plain suck, and it's a bummer having to watch them for nine minutes. The worst of them all is Trey, a guy who's a major dick to his girlfriend. Oh, big! 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 Oh,
No, I don't like to be touched after, okay? Thankfully, he's the first to get got. After he cracks open a cold post-coital beer, Jason shows up and stabs him in the back a whole bunch of times. Like, over and over and over, before folding him up in the bed like a human futon. Babe, hey, you know I can only fall asleep when I'm shaped like a bee, okay? For whatever reason, Jason leaves without killing the other kids, so they alert the police who try to cover up what they think is the return of Freddy Krueger. It's gotta be Freddy Krueger. Hey. Don't even say that son of a bitch's name out loud. Yep, motherfuckers act like they forgot about Fred. But Lori overhears the name, and after talking to Officer Stubbs, that one dude from Scary Movie, he calls the sleep at the police station right after remembering Freddy's name. This triggers a fun little creepy dream sequence with disappearing bloody footprints, some missing kid posters on bones from the Hogwarts TV, and this super creepy little girl. It culminates in a reunion performance by the Jump Rope Girls, and they know what the crowd came to hear. What? And a more victim, like Trey's friend Blake, who's also a total douche of a human being. You know about Feng Shui? And who's actor recently graduated what? from the Nicholas Cage Academy of Acting. My best friend was just killed, Dad. Sure. How about giving me some fucking space? He falls asleep on his horse, and Freddy shows up to kill him, but it turns out Kruger is still too impotent to do the job himself. I swear this never happens for me, dear. Freddy friggin' talks directly to the audience, and he lets them know that he'll... Blake wakes up unharmed and finds his father decapitated by Jason. Aw, but if it's Alex Jones that the dad had survived, he could have spread conspiracies about all these kids getting killed. Cause that's what Alex Jones does. He's a bad man. Blake barely has time to think about what he'll do with all that inherited info wars money before Jason appears behind him and uses his machete to slash Blake to death off screen. Sure, it's an off screen death, but at least we get to see the hilarity of Blake using his father's pedestal. Next up on our crossover itinerary is Weston Hill, the infamous psych war that served as the setting for everyone's favorite nightmare scene. And now there is Lori's ex Will. I'm and going to. Will yeah, Torsen. Will was played by John Ritter's son, and Mark's just a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, you take that pill, bro. They escaped the hospital, and then were subjected to like 20 minutes of just watching these crappy characters do their crappy lives. <laughs> we're here for Freddy vs. Jason, not Freddy vs. Kelly Rowan. Also, like, shouldn't her nose be gone in real life after that? Mark tries to convince Will that Freddy is real and was responsible for his brother's apparent suicide. He also accidentally spreads the good word of Freddy Krueger to the entire high school, like a big dumb Fred evangelist. That night, everyone heads to a crazy cornfield ranger. You know, standard high school party. The resident nerd Linderman shows up uninvited and gets hazed by this Bobby Moynihan looking guy named Dad. But don't feel too bad for Linderman. Do you think oh my god. You tear me down, you make yourself feel better because you really make yourself. It's kind of pathetic when you actually stop and think about it. Doing, of course, you can't think. It's all that makeup weighing down your head. Okay, actually, that does sound like something I would have said in high school for beta. Damn. Uh, is he gonna. Like or like a high school. He ends up passing out. There's a dream that wanders into a board. Okay. Because Freddy just likes to do his work. I just need to get, like, a burst or a shotgun real quick, because I have an SMG. And that's it. And I have an SMG and a pistol. Someone has a freaking... It turns out Jason wants to party, too, so he impaled Jason to the ground. But in the process... Who has a burst? He was looking close to guy. He was straight up about to rape Jason while he was passed out. But as we saw in Jason take Manhattan, if the boys don't take time, Oh, never mind. I got a blue one. Did you really? Wait. No. Up there goes Eddie. Do 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 do. Well, I'm being smart. Me? What chest? I mean, there's a chest. There's no chest. What do you mean?
Tag team! Spike trap in there. B. 
being smart. I have no shotgun too, and there's a lot of people in this area. Oh wow, oh wow. I got you, I, I kinda just shot you a little bit, but you're fine, you'll be fine. It's just a flesh wound. I like the way you pick your boy. What? Oh yeah, I wasn't even like 20 freaking 7 feet away. What are we gonna do for 55 minutes? I feel like we are because I just saw two people get freaking bull action. I wanted. I wanted to go to freaking. The, you wanna know why I wanted to go here? Because you. Oh my god, stop. No. No. Because you can find a vending machine that's here. Early. Relax, relax, relax. 
Tell us some people found it. No, they found it. Five HP, I swear. Yes, finally. Well, you just jinxed yourself, my dude. That was yours. That's the curse of Eddie. That's the curse of Eddie. Eddie Eddie jinx everyone. Maybe we shouldn't play with him. Maybe maybe we shouldn't play with Eddie. You ate that bullet, dude. You ate that bullet. White man's gonna. Eddie, Eddie's been. Eddie's been sort of a bad player right now. Show. Like, dude, I'm 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 hyped for the vending machine. Do you wanna know why? You can literally like buy a bull action if you're not getting good look luck. You could buy a freaking um, a guy to missile launcher, dude. It's it's just gonna be so easy to get weapons. No, you deposit wood. You no, dude. You deposit wood into the into it, and then it gives you a weapon. Oh, nice. Um, cause he meant I'll be stupid. Either that or, dude, either that or the rocket launcher has no ammo. You could do that. Oh, 
Oh, nice. He, he, he. I got impulses and boogies. Guys, I got impulses and boogies. I'm not. Or should I? I You're, you're allowed, dude, there's even a setting where you're allowed to change your stuff. Using controller is a thing. Oh, then I, I, if I were you, if I were you, I would still use controller then. Yeah, yeah, it does. But the one thing I hate about keyboards is uh, pretend like you want to kill this dude so bad and like, like, oh, you're choking and then you're just spamming, you're just freaking hitting your keyboard and ripping off all the keys. Just, come on, I can kill him. Did other people go here? Why? I have three impulses and a launch pad. And what is wrong with Daddy's hand? It, it, he, he has. I didn't even use the shield, my dude. Look at my boogie bot. Eddie. That's when we taught. Oh no, Eddie, 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 I got something for you. Eddie, I got something for you. Eddie, Eddie, I got a campfire. Eddie. Wait, Eddie, turn on your mic. It's bo- it, I want your mic on. It's better when your mic's on. I like it because he might find people. And then we might get destroyed by them. So, like, if, if, we, if he doesn't see them. Sorry, gotta go double B, double B, Dali. I'm in the hill tops. The view's real nice. Sorry. Dude, we all have 100 HP, dude. This is crazy. How many V bucks? Like, how much did you get? Forty? I mean, four thousand. <clears throat> oh, I see someone. I see someone. Oh, that was. Dude, I swear I'm one of the best snipers on um on like freaking console, dude. 
I swear. Oh, I got two. Oh, I'm getting crossbowed. Got him. He was standing. He. Uh, oh, I killed him. I killed him. I like how you guys are going for that loot, even though there's loot over here. Oh, if I did run that. What's this epic thing in here? Oh. Oh, this guy had some good loot. Saved my life. <laughs> oh no, Eddie! Eddie! Can I. Eddie, how much sniper ammo do you have? How much sniper. Wait, I have a campfire. Guys, I have a campfire as well. I also have two launch pads. Guys, get right here! White man! No, it's good. He, he he sort of like knew. Why'd you build this? Bye. <laughs> you guys want to launch? You want know no? We, yeah, we can walk through this circle. Or do you want a launch pad? You guys want a launch pad in this circle? Yeah, seeing this, it's just right here. Yeah, I have two. No, mine. Oh, Ali, Ali, a face for you. Oh my God. You know what I don't like about Ninja? Do you know that one time when he rejected like this kid's shout out when he donated like twenty dollars to him? I, uh, uh, I, I feel bad for the. I, uh, nothing like. He's not a shout out like he's not a bot he's not a shout out botter. Yeah, do you ever know that one time he did though? Yeah, where the kid when the kid accidentally don't and the kid accidentally, yeah, donated $300. Everyone? Thank you. He said, he said, you're lucky I have like, a donate my stuff back or else I would have just stole your money. <laughs> he, no, no, he did, he did. He did it off camera though. He didn't want to show his privacy. Wait, I want to shoot down a slit. Oh my. I want to snipe one. <laughs> Was it just built? Oh. Uh, no, it's been chartered a few times. Well. Wow, you guys are, you guys are weird. You guys didn't loot this? I was gonna get that chest, but okay. <laughs> Wait, Eddie, where? Eddie saw someone, he sniped, he shot. 
Oh, I see him. Oh. No. Wait, I, I think it might have been you guys. I got him. He's dead. You did? I got you. Yeah. Oh. So. Bye. I nearly killed someone. Okay. Oh, what the? I'm a hacker. Oh, I swear I'm a. I need a mini really bad. A mini or minis? I hit someone? It's over here. It's always a semi, guys. Free semi auto here. Build a roof.
I knew you were gonna do that, Eddie. If I die, I swear. At least I killed one of them. <laughs> Us? I literally want to leave this game. Like, look at look at his HP. Look at his HP. Back then, the internet wasn't as prevalent and was nowhere near used in the way that it's used now for us to share gaming theories like we're doing right at this moment. And there was actually an Easter egg in that game that Tim Sweeney developed, where a very large city. Now, throw up this image on screen here. A very large city had. Exactly like we've got in Fortnite Battle Royale right now, a blue glowing meteor coming towards this city. How much longer? T 30 minutes? And it was a part of this game that he had developed with no real meaning behind it, real explanation, and was overlooked, and obviously never talked about really since because it was such an old game. However, with Tim Sweeney's ties now with Fortnite and him obviously owning Epic Games, this could have been something the development team have again nodded at in the direction of this game that was developed with the blue meteor striking down the largest and biggest city not only in that game all of those years ago but in Fortnite Battle Royale right now in the form of Tilted Power. So all looking pretty crazy guys, isn't it? Now, we've got another really important here. This is linking directly back in the game. Next to Season 3 of the Battle Pass in Fortnite Battle Royale. Now, was a very obvious theme with the Season 3 Battle Pass, and that was a space theme. If you take a look at the Battle Pass unlocks as you work all the way up to Tier 100, it starts off in the Tier 100. No, I'm the one to talk to. You know what? Fine. Where's the park it is? So, I want a long match. I want a long match. So that when like the new outfits and stuff come out, like I get to see them. Mhm. Mm where it's like us against like two, and where it's like us against two. Wait, white man, your mic's on mute. Wow.
No, there's the girl. There, uh, there was a uh, girl. Oh, I got him. Got him. Now this is a very far-fetched theory, but a very interesting one. Can you guys think? And you left. Eddie? <laughs> Woo! He did you! I was just had charged. Wait, that girl that just killed me? I was ta I was talk I wasn't talking about her. There's this girl that that like this black hair girl. Like the one. I don't play with vibrations on when I'm playing with my. Like the girl. Doesn't benefit me at all, so don't play with vibrations. However, there's been a bug or a supposed bug recently in Fortnite. No, like no, it was like this one. Uh, it was like this. No reason at all. Do you know that one girl with like the small ponytail? Not, not the, the bunny rabbit, but the other one? That results in the vibration of your controller. However, you guys on Reddit have put together the vibrations that you get on your controller, and they seem to consist of short and long bursts of vibration, very similar to Morse code, which is made up of the exact same point station. Short point and a long point. Now there appears to be four different patterns that you get, and again, if you do play with vibrations on, all these random vibrations and you can quickly start memorizing the type of vibration you get, please do. But according to what the great users put together, there are four different vibrations happen to be found in the game. Using Morse code to work out what they mean and obviously find their corresponding letters, they seem to break down the following. So with these four different codes, you get ourselves SOS five four one eight. So the SOS is fairly obvious, save our souls, a distress signal, often used when you're in a situation of immediate peril and things aren't going your way, which would make sense if the SOS is about to strike you down. D5 would be very obvious to link with coordinates for the Fortnite Battle Royale map. I'm sure you can guess where those line up on. They hit the northern side of Tilted Towers, landing on that giant city that we've been talking about for the whole video. And finally, the numbers... Four, one, eight. Now, uh, depending on where you live in the world, the month and the day goes in certain order. So we let's just take this yeah. American month and day. Yeah, put it on squad. Everything's all working over. They're working all around the world. But they are predominantly based in America. So if we did a four as a month, that is April, the month we're in right now. If we take the 18 as a day, that would land on the 18th of April of this month falling within the season three period for Fortnite Battle Royale, because that doesn't end until the end of April. And as a result, giving us a potential date for when this is all gonna go down within Fortnite Battle Royale. Very interesting. Backs up also the location being Tilted Towers, but it doesn't quite end there. We've got another piece of information to back up that date as well. So after a little bit of Googling, interneting and uh, Redditing, it turns out that there is a meteor shower that happens on a yearly basis called the Lyra's Meteor Shower. And the date for which this appears, and it fits between a little, uh, a few days actually, uh, begins on the 16th of April and ends. Your home makes so much possible. And with a home equity line of credit from Ant, it's a.
Why? Where are they? Why did my thing like, like freaking look up? Pon pon, don't you care? Don't you Have you ever slammed someone before they got on a launch pad? Well, I have. <laughs> no, I got it. I, I did it yesterday. Oh. 
What about... What about Scorcher? Oh. Yeah. I No, I left. I left it. So he, he might as well not say it. I'm watching the fourth leprechaun one in space. Yeah. It's it, the graphics of it. Dude, the graphics of it are potato. Oh yeah, I, I love the one again, Jason versus um Freddy. Yeah, yeah, dude, there was like like there was over 20 kills in that. Everyone's represented. Even Metal has different. I would say, I would say, um... Yeah. J Jason, though, like... I, I feel like Jason's a better one, just Freddy's just a... smarter one. These kill kill killers are joined by Dr. Tina Reed, who's there representing some asshole named Dr. Mittenhand, so you know where it's for some stupid shit. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't judge a few by Dr. Mittenhand. Oh, one dumb looking dude. Wow, okay. No, no, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be judging by his appearance either. He probably has like... Oh, have your order, son. Never mind, he's an outer space Nazi doctor. You know what I think's weird? It's it's a sci-fi movie. Like that's that's not good to be a sci-fi movie. Like Leprechaun One was cool, even though the freaking wait. It was either Leprechaun 1 or 2, when the freaking Leprechaun got like shot like 21 times and didn't die. I'm gonna go to this melon right here. Oh, okay, at least, at least there's one chest. Of course, it gives me a hand cannon. Nice. I'm good with that. Oh, this one's looking at freaking like tilted. Bon bon, don't you worry, don't you worry, just run away, away. Huh. <laughs> 
left saver. <laughs> Dude, you know what I think is weird? How the heck did those freaking, how the heck did the Leprechaun movies get published? Like, I, I literally knew, I'll, I'll take one, I'll take one. I knew a Leprechaun in space was gonna be like freaking potato graphics. Oh, help, help. You can knock him if you hit him once with the pickaxe. He's like 9 HP, dude. Yeah, a bit. Not that good, though. Wait, you shot all of, all of his shield off and you didn't die. Diego, no shield. One shot, please. Probably Caitlyn knocked on the door. I'm, I'm running. <laughs> Please tell my. Wait, the new stuff might have came out. Nope, it's coming out in nine minutes. I Match real quick.
Yeah, but, like, you're still definitely a Nazi. You might want to watch it with a downfall rate, Steve. He unilaterally extends the Marines' contract, threatening them with mutiny charges if they don't follow orders, so now these Marines are the anti left force. While they're out hunting the leprechaun aliens, Harold and Dr. Minhan do some weird science with awful direct-to-video effects that result in a West Coast herd? Okay. Looks like Minton is real thrilled about it, though, so what do I know? Harold drinks the leaders with two names and blue cross, and the captain's blue milk cocktail, the rest of the side. As disgusting as space Nazi and Kirby Dick are, they might be more entertaining than the Marines walking around in Paris doing fucking nothing. This movie's so bad and boring. And even when there is a supposed action scene, it's just gunfire and Leprechaun making finger explosions with no consequence. Eventually, Dan gets scared and runs off on his own, only to find a monitor with left on it and left up a cat in the pink and blue with much less than the <laughs> Pon Pon, don't you cry. Did you cry? It's just Pon Pon. I landed first, guard me, it's mine. Ooh, nice. Yeah, that was me. I gotta get uh, a I tried knocking a guy that was like, like two, like, I guess 200 meters away. I'm out. Blue pump. Oh, Diego, how was it like? Wait, Diego. Is it fun going to the same? Is it fun going to the same school as Nostrad? Oh, I was shot.
Guys, help me. No, he sent me a photo of him. Oh no, that's me. He's behind a rock. No? No? No, there's a dude right here. How much shield did this- Guys, the new stuff came out. Basically, so should we just die? There you go. Well, I, I don't like the time change. It's like back then, so it used to, it, uh, all the new stuff used to come out at like five. Pom pom, don't you cry, don't you cry, it's just pom pom, wait, wait. When she says wait, you know, when that girl says wait, wait, I freaking think she says wee, wee. I'm not, I need some on my freaking zero. <laughs> oh, there's a blue pump in here. Can I get it, please? You gave me 17. Now I only have 17 shots. Yeah. Ew. Man, this kid is disgusting. Cowboy boots made disgusting. Mine's better. Mine has more. Mine has better accuracy. I don't know why. I feel like epic guns are the hardest to find. Like epic bolt actions. Oh, I see someone. Or at least I thought I did. Oh. Oh, we hit each other. Oh my God. Where are you guys? Oh, 
I'm literally going to my ramp. My no! 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 Help! 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 Oh, can I get the jug jug, please? Or not. Or not. Okay, can I get the AR ammo? Or not. Is there, chug, is there any, is there more AR ammo for me? Oh God, they had a lot of shotgun ammo. Oh, I have a hundred. Can I, can I? Well, non-stop, I mean, I mean, guard me. Here, this is for you. There's 18. Eddie, this is for you. Did you just, did you just steal the shotgun ammo? Eddie. Do you want it back? Who has AR ammo? Who has AR ammo? Guys, who has AR ammo? Who? Who has AR ammo? Please, just answer me. Can I have some AR ammo? I... Please. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It was only 11. It was 11. <laughs> he just stole it. Oh, you, Eddie, here you go. Why did I just call you Eddie? There's eight. You deserve eight. Oh, oh, I see someone breaking the tree. Oh, he's he's a John Wick walking. <laughs> Dude, I feel like he's Stephen Hawking. That's my loot. He was a standing freaking bush. Oh, I like how you said I'm only gonna get the shotgun shells and stole everything. I literally don't even have AR ammo. I have dirty bullets. I've been screaming. F I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm dying. Yeah, I had charged him with the sniper. No, guard me, you blocked my spot. I don't, how much did you give me? Is he still in there? What? 57. See him? It's uh, they're down by the truck. They're going up the ramp. Do you do you see where the cargo truck is? He's on the stairs. He's he's hiding on the stairs. Oh,
me in midair. Probably, probably gonna be the free. I got paper. <laughs> no, I got paper twice in a row. Oh, now I got rock. in the raven so long <laughs> or tomorrow <laughs> okay yeah it's probably gonna be this sick you're right about that Diego.
why? I got stuck on a freaking door. I wasn't even in, I was even inside the house. Oh, no, no. 